Once the grain gets in through the feeder house, we've gone through the feed accelerator, now we're going to do some separation. So we want to get it into the rotor. We've come off the feed flight and we've got down into the threshing elements. We want to make sure your concave is properly adjusted and level. So in order to do that, we want to make sure that our stop bolts up above here on the back side are at the same length. And you want to adjust that concave up, rotate the rotor by hand in neutral until you hear a slight ticking where that rotor is coming in contact with the concave. Once you hear that ticking, back the, the concave back off until the, the noise goes away. Make sure you're leveled front to back and then lock everything in place. That'll get you a proper levelment on the concave. Moving back to separator grates. On the separator grates you've got some options. This particular machine in the front here you can see that the spacers are installed underneath. What that does is it allows us more gap to get the corn cobs through when harvesting corn. If you're only doing small grains or beans and need a better cleaning capacity you can move those spacers up to the top or take them out, as we, as we say. Um, and then if you need more cleaning capacity, if you look at the, the grain quality and performance video that we have put together, Keith will go into some more options we can do back here for more aggressive cleaning uh, for heavier crop mat or uh, larger heads that you have some problems getting the grain threshed out properly. Rotor drive gearbox, we want to make sure we've got proper oil level. Refer to your owner's manual as per how many hours you can run the oil before it needs to change. Adjustment lever for your high speed and low speed is located right here. Refer to your owner's manual what speed you need to be on for your crop conditions. Discharge beater, we want to make sure your discharge beater is in good working condition. Depending on your machine, you could have a standard discharge beater or the larger machines later design had the discharge beater designed more like the feed accelerator. So a discharge beater, you want to make sure that your wear strips on the, on the edge are not broke or damaged. Make sure the wings up on the beater are not bent and that there's no damage anywhere on the beater so you get nice crop flow. While you're up in the beater area, you've got your discharge beater grate. That's going to be your last chance to get any of that free grain out of the heads off the cob and before it goes out through the discharge of the combine. A couple different Discharge beater grates, again refer to your machine, your owner's manual to see whether you have a standard beater grate or a heavy duty grate. Make sure it, and there's no damage to the grate, no fingers missing, no holes in it. And if it's in good working order, again that's your last chance to get any free grain out and into the cleaning chute and into your tank before it goes out to the rear of the machine. So what I've got here is actually the discharge beater grates. This grate here is, would be out of your 60 series, 70 series combines. As you can see, it's a little bit more gentle. It's actually the same grate as what's used in the separation grate in the rear of the machine. As the discharge beater comes across it, it's gonna comb the grain across, and then it's going to let the rest of the crop separate and drop off. This grate is out of the S-series combines. As you can see, it's more of a concave style grate. It's a little more aggressive. So it's going to get a little more thrashing just to try to get that last bit of that crop out of the material to get it separated out. 